สวัสดีครับ Hello and welcome to Daily Wisdom: Walking the Path with the Buddha. This is our mini series on the three universal truths. Today, I'm going to share with you the universal truth of discontentedness and why it plagues the unenlightened mind and why it's important to eliminate it. Welcome. The universal truth of discontentedness is to help you understand how the unenlightened mind functions. By understanding how the unenlightened mind functions, you can then move the mind towards the enlightened mind. So let's share with you what is the universal truth of discontentedness. The Buddha explains the universal truth of discontentedness has three feelings. Essentially, what he's describing is the unenlightened mind has pleasant feelings, painful feelings. And feelings that are neither painful nor pleasant; these are conditioned feelings. The mind is conditioning its inner feelings on some impermanent condition. For example, a pleasant feeling like happiness, excitement, elation, thrill, euphoria. These are pleasant feelings that you experience as a result of some condition. You get a new job. You're happy. You're excited. You're thrilled. You get a new boyfriend, a new girlfriend. You're happy. You're excited. You're thrilled. You receive a new pair of shoes or choose to purchase a new pair of shoes. You're happy. You're excited. You're thrilled. You're elated. This is a conditioned feeling. You're basing your inner feeling on some condition, and this inner feeling is a pleasant feeling. The second feeling of painful feelings. Are feelings like sadness, anger, frustration, irritation, annoyance, guilt, shame, or fear. Some people might even consider stress or anxiety painful feelings. These are experienced based on impermanent conditions. You lose your job, now you're sad. You lose your boyfriend or girlfriend, you're sad, you're angry, you're frustrated. You experience. A loss of shoes, or some material object, or some relationship changes. Now the mind experiences these painful feelings of sadness, anger, frustration, irritation, annoyance, guilt, shame, fear. All of this is a painful feeling and is discontent. Then there's feelings that are neither painful nor pleasant. I consider boredom, loneliness, shyness, uncomfortableness. Unsatisfactoriness, displeasure. These are feelings that are neither painful nor pleasant. The way that you can think about this is if your culture is such that if some, you were sitting on public transportation and someone you don't know came and sat next to you, and it, they were very close, maybe even touching your body, this isn't painful, but it's also not pleasurable for you either. The mind is uncomfortable, unsatisfied. Displeased. Another good example would be shyness. If you've ever experienced shyness, it's not painful. It's not pleasant. It's neither painful nor pleasant. These are the three feelings that describe the universal truth of discontentedness: pleasant feelings, painful feelings, and feelings that are neither painful nor pleasant. These are going to be based on some impermanent condition. There's some condition that is causing the mind to become discontent. When the mind experiences this happiness, excitement, thrill, euphoria, the mind is uncalm. Therefore, it's shaken up. It's unsteady. It's unstable. When the mind experiences painful feelings, it's unsteady. It's uncalm. It's shaken up. The mind is discontent. And when the mind is experiencing feelings that are neither painful nor pleasant. The mind is shaken up. It's unsteady. It's uncalm. It's discontent, discontented, or discontentedness. Many places in the Buddhist world describe this universal truth using the word suffering. During the lifetime of the Buddha, he used the word dukkha. This is a Pali word, and all the original source teachings of the Buddha go back to the Pali Canon. The Pali language is no longer a spoken language today, so we've lost a lot of the meaning of these words. And different people have different opinions about what one word means versus what another word means. So this word "suffering" that is being used to describe dukkha, in my opinion, is not the best word to be using, because if we use the word "suffering" 
Does that explain the pleasant feelings that you experience when you get a new pair of shoes or you get a new job or you get a new boyfriend or girlfriend? Would you say you were suffering in that situation? Perhaps if you were shy or somebody was sitting next to you on a public transportation, would you say that you were suffering when you were shy or someone was sitting next to you? I wouldn't say that I was suffering. The mind would have been discontent, discontented, or experiencing discontentedness, but not suffering. The word suffering really only describes that painful feeling of sadness, anger, frustration, irritation, annoyance, guilt, shame, fear. When I experienced those feelings, yes, there was suffering, but that word suffering doesn't explain the full description of the universal truth of discontentedness because it only explains that painful feeling, which is 33.3% of what the Buddha was explaining. So if we use the word suffering, that means we're missing 66.6% .6 of the Buddha's teachings. We're misunderstanding what it is that he's explaining that happens with the unenlightened mind, and thus how would we be able to move from the unenlightened mind to the enlightened mind. So by using the word discontent, discontented, or discontentedness, we're representing the full spectrum of what Gautama Buddha talked about as a pleasant feeling, painful feeling, and a feeling that is neither painful nor pleasant. This understanding of the universal truth of discontentedness is really important as we move into the Four Noble Truths in a couple of videos. In our future mini lessons, we're going to be describing the Four Noble Truths, which explains discontentedness, the cause of discontentedness, the elimination of discontentedness, and the path forward to eliminate all discontentedness from the mind, where the mind no longer bases its inner feelings on some impermanent condition. And we'll get to that in a future lesson. So these two videos, the universal truth of impermanence and the universal truth of discontentedness, is to help prepare you to understand the Four Noble Truths, which is a primary teaching in the Buddha's path. In terms of getting to enlightenment on the path to enlightenment, you would need to deeply understand the three universal truths and the Four Noble Truths just to get started. So I'm pleased that you've decided to listen to this video, to watch and understand. Now be sure to learn, reflect, and practice. Don't just believe what I'm sharing here. Instead, look at your own mind. Based on feelings that you've experienced in the past, does the Buddha fully explain the unenlightened mind to you? Are there any other feelings that you experience in the mind that doesn't fit into one of these three categories? Pleasant feeling, painful feeling, and a feeling that is neither painful nor pleasant. Are there other feelings that you experience that isn't described here? If you investigate and you observe the mind, particularly experiences that you've had in the past, then you'll come to the understanding that indeed this is a universal truth, that there are three feelings that are experienced in the unenlightened mind. And when you understand this, then you can move on to further study and start to work to eliminate discontentedness. This information is shared in chapter four of this book, Developing a Life Practice, The Path That Leads to Enlightenment. You can download this from buddhadailywisdom.com. It's completely free, or you can acquire a printed and Kindle version from Amazon. You can even take the file and go print it yourself if you like. So thank you for watching this video. I'll see you in the very next video, which concludes our mini-series on the three universal truths. Sawadee